Okay, so let's try to model the hammer. This is going to be kind of a more complicated um, part to make because it has some um, interesting curves. So let's go to Create Part Studio and let's rename this to Hammer. And let's go to the top plane and let's go view normal too. So I guess really what this should be is there should be a hammer handle and there should be a hammer head. So let's rename this to Hammer Head. Okay. All right. So let's get to work on the hammer head itself. There's a strategy you can use here, which is if you have a shape that has a lot of um, complex curves, complex shapes, you can actually take a picture of it and then you can um, import that picture into Onshape and you can use it as sort of like a guide. So we can turn a picture um, into like a template. So let's open a sketch. If you go up here, this is the search bar for searching tools, and you can um, type in insert image, right? Yep. So if you type insert, and it wants you to import, you click import down here. Uh, I'm going to go to desktop. Here's the picture of the hammer. I'm going to click open. It will be uploading the image. Nice, so now we can click on the image, and I think that we drag, yeah, you sort of drag like a square for how large it should be. Um, and now what we can do is we kind of have to scale this. Um, so what I usually do is I draw a line from top to bottom, and then I try to dimension the line. So I think the entire hammer is something like 10 inches long. That's good. So now this kind of scales the whole thing, you know, so that now um, this dimension here represents kind of what real life would be. So let's go ahead and sketch here. We should turn this into a construction line. So because whenever you take something, there's a little bit of perspective going on. Um, it's not completely orthogonal. These dimensions aren't perfect. So Just drag this along like this, sort of right down the middle. Nice. And now we can go from here to here. That'll be our first line. And then from here to here. And now we can draw some curves. So we're going to use splines. Splines are pretty much um, their version of curves. So to make a good spline, you usually want to click on the, the high points. Yep, just like that. And then you you can um, click on the middle lines to kind of push and pull them. Uh, this is not super important for BattleBots, but it's just something that you can do. Um, like all these organic shapes are super annoying to create. So there's there's no point in trying to get really fancy with it. Oh, I think I messed up here. I should really be creating two control points. So from here to here. So this will be the handle. So let's extrude this. I think the handle is probably like 0.75 inches or something thick. Nice. Okay, so now I'm going to do, obviously, if you really wanted to model the curves here, you'd have to do a lot more work. But um, we're going to use our good friend, the fillet. So let's go back up to fillet and click on all these images. One, two. bigger nice 
So it's going to round out all of these edges. Yep, there you go. So, yeah, this is like a, just an approximate um, version of the hammer handle. Okay, so, um, you know, the handle of the hammer is made of wood. And if we wanted to give it like a wood color and wood properties, what we can do is we can actually go down here to parts. So um, this is the only part in this part studio. And we can hit assign material. And, you know, they had a whole library of parts. So what we can do is we can go through here. We can probably scroll down to, like, wood or something like that. Um, oh, they got even the types of wood, like walnut. Interesting. Maybe, do they have oak? Oak. Wow. White oak. All right, there we go. So um, we can click on that, and then we hit um, check mark here. Um, let's edit the appearance. All right, cool. So um, something cool about uh, Onshape and all of these programs is that once you assign a material, you can actually calculate um, like the mass. So if we go down here to the bottom right and we do display mass properties, um, parts to measure, we can click on this part. Yeah, it will show us, it says mass, um, 0.144 pounds. Um, very useful for combat robotics because you have a weight limit and uh, if you have an assembly you'd like to know exactly what, pe what, what it all weighs. So this is a very useful um, tool you can use, the mass analysis. Very good. So here's the handle of the hammer. And what I'm going to do here is instead of um, instead of creating a whole new file here so that you know I have to import that image again and like you know dimension it and make the whole thing 10 inches, what we can do is we can just right click on this uh, file and do duplicate. So now it made a duplicate copy called hammerhead copy one. bad. I, uh, I made the handle, not the head. So this is hammer handle, and this will be hammer head. Okay. Um, and now what we can do is we can edit this. So we open the sketch. We still want this sketch, right? But we should just um, get rid of the fillet, get rid of the extrude feature, just deleting those. And we go into the sketch, and I just want to select everything here and make it into construction because we're not going to be um, creating solids with it. Very good. So now we hit N to go back to an orthogonal view. And now what we want to do is recreate these lines. And like I said, because the image is kind of taken at an angle, um, it's, it's just going to be an approximate kind of um, measurement here. Nothing about this is particularly um, precise. But it really doesn't need to be. Because it's mostly just for show. So again, I'm using these splines, spline tool for curves. Um, Just draw from one point to another point, and then you pull on these um, control sticks here to change the shape. Nice. And we should have another here. So we'll go all the way down here and just pull this control stick up and this control stick up. The basic idea is you need to make a continuous shape. Um, you really don't need to dimension stuff too much. Uh, I guess I should have dimensioned this, shouldn't I? So what we can do is if we want to reference um, you know, distance here,
we can go back into our other file. We can click here. This um, let's make this different. Let's let's define this this edge because we're going to have to put two things together here. So 0.85 is what I'm going to say. 0.85. And we can go into this sketch, and we can dimension this, and 0.85. Yep. Okay. So now those two will at least be equal. So we we will we'll get like a little flush, um, flush connection. Good. And we'll do extrude. And the head itself is like a little bit wider than the handle, so I'm going to make it one inch. Um, there we go. And now, like we did before, if we wanted to assign this part a material, um, I don't know, um, if we type tool steel, no? Okay. Uh, steel, what kind of is A4 is a kind of, oh, stainless steel. Car carbon steel, hardened alloy steel, that's, that's good. Alrighty, and so it will give us the density here, and now you know if we we want to know what the approximate obviously like the handle goes up through the middle of the the head here that's how it stays in right. But if this was a solid object, this would weigh um, 0.725 pounds. So just just a just a cool way to to estimate the size of stuff and mass. And now um, you know the hammers in the back they kind of have a split right. So what we can do here is we can go to this plane, we can draw a sketch, and we can draw right here, and it's sort of like a triangle shape, isn't it? And it goes sort of right here, and then down here. What we have to do is draw a line, select these two, make them coincident, select this and this make them coincident. Nice. Now we can draw another construction line, but this time off of the midpoint of this one. Good. And we can drag this into the very middle. And we can do angles here. So if you click on one line, another line, they're kind of off at an angle. It will give you uh, the option of setting exactly how many degrees. So I don't think it's 15, I think it's more like 10 degrees. 10 degrees here, here, here is like 10 degrees, good. Okay, now um, we need to close this shape. So we'll just go from here to here. This is kind of sloppy, but you know, when you're not defining things that have like a definite size or shape or that you don't have dimensions for, you can kind of usually get away with it. So um, let's do remove. And now you have to make it intersect, you know, the other object. Uh, okay. Uh, sometimes you just have to hit merge with all. I don't know why um, on shape does that, but it's just something you have to do sometimes. All right, awesome. So now we've got the hammerhead. Let's change the color here. Um, edit appearance. Um, make it something more like that. Yeah, looks good. Nice. Now this is really more of a circle, um, circle, so we can go view normal too, and we can do a sketch, and we can create a circle, and we can go from here to here, and then we can create another circle, and we can do a remove function. Yeah, nice. Good, good, good. All right. So you know, this kind of gives it more of a circular head kind of look. Um, it, it's not perfect, but it, it looks a little bit more realistic, I guess. So we can keep adding fillets. Um, yeah, you know, pro tip, adding fillets just makes curved stuff look more realistic. Um, that looks a little stupid, actually. Um, maybe we change it to just a smaller kind of fillet. Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, we could even go as far as to add even more material here. So, um, draw another circle, make it a little bit bigger. And this time, we're going to add material. You know, push it the opposite way. Maybe make it 0.75 instead. Um, that looks a little comically large. So let's go back into the sketch and 
edited it. And so 1.3, maybe we just make it 1. Uh, 1.2. Still a little big. Uh, one point one two five. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and now we we can fill this up a little bit too. Sure, why not? Okay, it's not bad. It, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it, yeah, you get the point. It doesn't want to add any more fillets here. Okay, so. Oh, you know what it is? This is too, um, this is, this is too wide. Oh, that's way better. Okay. Um, let's kill that. Let's add, um, uh, yeah, that's really good. smaller fillet here, maybe just one sixteenth. Um, maybe put it on this edge too. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty hammery to me. That's that's a convincing hammer. Um, maybe we do change the diameter here just a little bit. Instead, yeah, okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so you know we got the hammer handle, we got the hammer head. Um, now, how do we put them together? So I would create an assembly. An assembly is just a combination of more than one part, and this is actually going to be a sub assembly technically. And basically, we can add um, or insert. So you go to insert over here. You can insert parts. All right. So let's insert both of these parts. Hit OK. And we right click on this to fix it in place so that it doesn't move around. And now, what we do is um, we have to mate all these things together. So basically, how we do this is we want to select certain surfaces and relate them in certain ways. So planar mates are very useful. Um, pretty much two surfaces that are flat. So you take this uh, planar surface, you take this planar surface, you click them together and it will inference you know, the midpoint and things like that if it has one. Um, otherwise it will just mate the surface. And uh, we'll get more into um, exactly how to uh, mate things together in efficient ways. Um, in my opinion, I think Onshape is not as good as SolidWorks when it comes to mating stuff together in assemblies. That's really one of my big um, complaints about it. But um, there's our hammer. Looks pretty good. Um, not too far off from the real thing. Let's let's take a look. Yeah, you know, so not not too bad, you know, for 10, 10 minutes work. Yeah, that, that, that's that's hammer like, you know. That's that's kind of a hammer. It, it's it's pretty good. Um, so, you know, I I hope this shows that making stuff in CAD is not as um, hard as it seems. You can you can literally take pictures of stuff and outline it. Um, you can you know create many different features, put them together. Um, a, a very simple assemblies, very simple geometry can get you 90% of the way there. So um, let's continue making this robot.